Hi, welcome to Make It Monday. I'm Jennifer Ellefson, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use colored pencils on some of your projects. This is the project we're going to make today, and it's really quite beautiful. Um, we're going to start off, I'm going to show you, I use a small clipboard, and I've cut a Cricut mat to size, and I like to use this when I'm using my colored pencils. The repositionable adhesive on the mat makes it really simple to lay down my project and have it stay in place and not worry about the pencil shifting it. I'm starting off with my Prismacolor sand and that is going to provide some highlights on these two pumpkins. And then I'm going to move on to yellow ochre. It's really the next shade in this color family. And you'll notice that I'm just doing it very quickly around the highlight. This is going to let me blend it in. And then I'm going to switch up to this background pumpkin since it's going to be a little bit darker. This is mineral orange and I'm just going to quickly fill in the rest of the pumpkin space here. And I'll tell you about the image as I'm doing this. It's the fall fillers from Friendship Jar and it's stamped with dark chocolate ink. So I just fast forwarded this to show you that I've moved on to pumpkin orange and I'm using that as my darkest color. I do take a little bit more care with my dark color, one so that I don't go outside the lines and two for the shadowing. Um, you just want to kind of think about where your darker places would be and on this pumpkin it's actually very easy because it's just right along the lines. And again, it doesn't have to be incredibly precise or neat. Don't worry about pencil marks and I'll show you why in a minute. This is baby oil and I use baby oil when I'm using my colored pencils. You can also use Gamsol. I use paper stumps and I reuse them. I have one for each one tip for each color family. So using my orange tip, I'm just going to dip in this baby oil and it doesn't take a lot. And you can just start blending. And you'll see that as the oil starts to break down the wax on this, all your colors go together very nicely and your pencil marks start to disappear. Don't be afraid to turn it around to get a different perspective on it or just to reach a different spot a little bit better. And you can start to feel when your paper stump needs a little bit more oil or Gamsol. This project would work just as well with Gamsol or odorless mineral spirits. Gamsol is artist grade mineral or odorless mineral spirits. And now you see how those shadows really blended together nicely with the highlight. So moving on to the acorns, I'm using ginger root, which is actually probably my favorite neutral. Again, just coloring lightly, quickly. And now I'm going to add some green to it. This is artichoke. And just like with the pencils, you can go quickly. You don't have to worry about your neatness because once you use your blending solution, it's going to all go together nicely. For my shadow, I'm using henna, and it goes very well with ginger root. Once again, taking a little bit more care with this darker color. And when these three colors get put together, it looks very much like a natural acorn with the color variations.
for the acorn paths, I'm starting out with burnt ochre in the center and then switching over to sienna brown. You'll notice that I also colored in the pumpkin stems with ginger root and the pumpkin leaves with artichoke. I do have different tips for dark brown and light brown to really keep from contaminating the colors on these paper tips. So for the leaves, I'm starting out with jasmine. Jasmine is a very warm, light yellow, and this will be the highlights on my leaves. And now I'm going to skip right to my shadowing and my darker color on this. Nice thing about fall leaves is that there's really so many variations that you don't have to worry too much about it. Again, this is my artichoke pencil. By using similar colors or the same color over and over, you will get a very consistent look in your project. Now I'm adding Scarlet Lake and I'm just filling that in to any blank spots I see. There's the leaves before blending and I'm just going to take a clean tip here, or a new tip, one that I use for multiple colors, and blend that all together. I really like coloring fall leaves because there's just no right or wrong to it. It makes it very easy and quick. These fine tips on the paper stump let you get into the corners a little bit better, so if there's any area that you haven't colored, you can take the color right to that spot. You do want to take care not to drag it into the other color. Like here, I'm carefully avoiding the pumpkins. And as you use this technique more, you'll see what works well for you. I really like using small circles with this. It just tends to bring the colors together well. Okay, so this left leaf, I want a little more color on, so I'm going to go right back over it with my pencil again, just add a little bit more red, and just blend it right again. It behaves a little differently if you've already blended it in your coloring on top, but you can still add some great color to it. Here's a colored pencil tip to remember, actually any coloring. Fill in the blank spots in between. Make it look more filled almost shadows that you're filling in. And speaking of shadows, I'm going to move on to a warm gray. This is warm gray 30%. And I'm just going to quick put in a couple shadows. I'm using a warm gray because this, these are all such warm colors. I'm going to quick blend that to fade away the pencil lines because everything else has pencil lines that have been faded. It's hard to see in the video, but it's, it's pretty striking in real life when you see the pencil marks versus the blending. And the last color I'm adding here is Jade Green. And I'm using this to give it more of a, a glass look. So I'm going to add some shadows with it and just quickly go right around the outside of the jar. And once again, since I'm going to blend this, I'm not worrying about it being completely precise. Just 
want a little bit of baby oil for this cherry green. And when it's finished, it gives the jar more dimension. It's very subtle, but it really helps when you're looking at final projects. So for card assembly, I'm using an A2 card base made from Summer Sunrise. The front's been done with linen canvas impression plate and vintage tea dye duo. I have a two inch by five and a half inch piece of craft and I've stamped it with new background basic houndstooth and dark chocolate. And this strip is one inch by five and a half inches. It's from Autumn Abundance and it works really well with the image for the jar and it inspired my color choices for the coloring. My sentiment calling for you is done on little labels and it was die cut and stamped with dark chocolate. Falling for you is a sentiment from Autumn Acorns. So I quick want to tie a bow around my jar. This is rustic button twine. Some floppy ends here. And I'm going to line it up to the bottom of this strip. Adhere it with the foam tape. And there you go. A nice fall card to send to someone that you're thinking of. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you learned some new ideas to use with your pencils. And I can't wait to see your projects.